are so excited to have you with us this week. We have some really fun things planned for you, but before we do that, we need to talk about last week's lesson and what we learned about for Palm Sunday. That's right. So can you tell your moms and dads a little bit about what happened? Well, let's recap Okay, with let's them. do that. So, Perfect. okay, boys and girls, let's think about it. First of all, Jesus was riding into Jerusalem on a donkey, and the people were using palm leaves to worship him. Yeah. So we so want to beautiful. show you the beautiful Sunday Palm Sunday crafts that each one of you guys have made at home and sent in to us. So let's start this out for the first one is Tavin Colson. Zion, Hannah, Aiden, Elijah, Stella, Mila, Josue, Searsha, Walker, and Anna. for taking the time to do those crafts and then sharing them with us. It's time for a little game. So everybody needs to get up, get on your feet and do a little wiggle and get ready. All right. So we have some three pictures that we are going to show the kids, but we have actions for those pictures. Okay. So Yolanda, she's going to help us figure out what actions we should make. So the first picture that's coming up on your screen right now is the cross. What should oh. we do? How do you think, boys and girls, you'd use your body to make a cross? I think I would go something like this. Okay, like that. Yeah, perfect. Okay. okay. And the second picture that's coming up, that's a picture of a tomb, right? Oh. A place where they put Jesus' body. Okay. This one's a little bit harder, but I think if we just kind of go like this with our bodies. Okay. Like that. that. Kinda, like, you know, there's a hole, there's the tomb. Okay. Okay. That's the tomb. And the third picture is what, Yolanda? A rock, like oh. the stone in front of the tomb. Okay. So we're just going to use our bodies, and we're going to crouch down okay. like a rock. Perfect. That's the rock. Awesome. So boys and girls, these pictures are going to come up on your screen, and as they're scrolling through them, you have to decide which picture you think it's going to stop on. And when it stops, if you're the same as that picture, you get a point. So we're going to play some Sounds some like rounds. fun. It's going to be awesome. Yeah. So we're going to play some rounds with your moms and dads and your brothers and sisters. So here we go. This week is so special, and we are so excited to tell you the story we have today. Yolanda, do you know why this week is so special? Um, I think I do, mm. Pastor Jory, but I definitely know someone who for sure would know, and I think even have some clues for us. I think I know who that is, too. Hamilton! Hamilton! Boys and girls, can you help us call Hamilton today? Let's count to three. One, two, three, Hamilton, Hamilton. <laughs> oh, do you hear him? I hear him oh, too. Oh, there he is. is. There he comes. Hi, Hamilton. <gasps> Hamilton, you seem really excited today. Oh, he has a clue. Oh, thank oh. you. What, what is that? <gasps> oh, oh, is that a gift for me? <gasps> oh, Hamilton, it has chocolate in it. Is there... Is this a clue? Yes, he says he's so excited, Pastor Dre. Oh, Whoa. okay. He Why says because he, he gets the candy. Oh, yeah. oh, and oh, he says he also gets to go on an Easter egg hunt. Oh, that's so yeah. fun. And oh, he brought us chocolate because he likes oh, chocolate. So good. Oh. Well, let's have some chocolate. Hey, oh, it's thanks, Hamilton. Hamilton. Mm. Mm. Such good candy. That's so good. Wait, mm. wait a minute. Hamilton, 
Like, it's, that's, that's fun. But I think, I think, Hamilton, you're forgetting something. I think you're forgetting the most important thing. I think Hamilton's forgetting the reason we celebrate Easter. Do you have a clue about that, Hamilton, about why we celebrate Easter? Oh, yes. He says, look behind the tomb. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's what he okay. says. Okay, okay. Hamilton, there's nothing, there's nothing behind the tomb. But he says that's the point, Pastor Jory. There's nothing there. Huh. That's kind of confusing. Hamilton, what, what do I, what should I do with that? He says we need to look in the Bible to oh, hear the story. Oh, look in the Bible. Oh, all right, boys and girls, let's sing our songs at home with our parents. It's to the tune of Mary Had a Little Lamb. Now it's time to hear God's word, hear God's word, hear God's word. Now it's time to hear God's word, so let's look in the Bible. All right, boys and girls, let's say goodbye to Hamilton. Bye, Hamilton. Bye, Hamilton. And let's listen to the big God story together. We call all the stories we read from the Bible the big God story because God's big and his story is big and he wants us to be part of it. So now we need to start at the very beginning of the Bible. The true story I'm about to tell you began in a beautiful garden that stood between four grand rivers. God made the very first people to live in the Garden of Eden. Boys and girls, I bet you you can guess who they are. Yeah, that's right. They were named Adam and Eve. It was wonderful in the garden until Adam and Eve sinned. Sin is what happens when we make bad choices and do something that doesn't please God. Because Adam and Eve disobeyed God and made a bad choice, they weren't allowed to be in the garden anymore or be as close to God as they once were. But God is such a good God, he never leaves his people alone. God made a promise that someday there would be a savior. This promised savior would be able to forgive us and all people of our sin, so we can know God and be with him forever. And so it began. All the people on earth began to wait for the promise to come. After the creation and Adam and Eve, there was Noah. There was a big flood that covered the earth with water, and the only people who were left alive were Noah and his family. After the flood, God made a covenant with Noah. A covenant is an extra special promise. When God makes promises, he always keeps them. God made a covenant with Noah and all the creatures on earth that would ever live. It's a promise for me, for you, and for all of our friends. He promised he would never flood the whole earth again. And to remind us that he always keeps his promises, God puts a rainbow in the sky after it rains to show that we can trust him. Noah's family began to grow and grow and grow, and the earth once again was filled with people and new nations. God always stayed very close to his people, protecting them when they fought with other countries. He guided them through the desert to lead them to a new home, and he sent them prophets. A prophet is someone whom God gives a special, special message that he wants to share with his people. It was a way for God to always be with his people, even before the promised Savior came. God told his people he wanted to be their king and show them the best way to live. But the people of God, they didn't listen, and they wanted to have kings, just like all the other countries and nations. So God gave them kings. There were good kings, like King David and King Josiah, and then there were bad kings. Because of some of the bad choices the bad kings made, God's people were taken to lands that weren't their own and were forced to leave their homes. But God never left his people alone. He remembered his promise. God used faithful people who listened to his words and obeyed his directions to bring his people back home to Israel where the Savior would be born. And then something happened. God was silent. He didn't say anything to the people through a prophet or through a priest or through a king. Not one word. And so the people just waited for the promise. There were almost 400 years before the people heard anything from God. God was quiet, but that didn't mean he forgot his promise. 
we can trust God because we know he always keeps his promises. One night, God ended his silence. God sent an angel named Gabriel to a young girl named Mary. He told her she was going to have a baby, God's son, who would be the savior for all people. God gave us the promise when he told Mary she would have the baby Jesus. Jesus was the savior God had promised in the garden with Adam and Eve many years before. On the night Jesus was born, God sent angels to announce his birth to shepherds in a field nearby. God didn't just send one or two angels. The Bible tells us he sent too many angels to even count. The shepherds were so excited they went to see the baby Jesus right away. Then they went and told everyone what they'd seen and heard. The promised Savior had been born in Bethlehem. Through the years, Jesus grew up in a way that was pleasing to God. He never made a bad choice or did anything wrong. Not even once. Jesus lived his entire life teaching people the best way to live. He cared for people who were hungry, healed people who were hurt or sick, and even brought people who had died back to life. Jesus really showed his power and showed that he was God. God sent Jesus to be the Savior and bring us back to God so we could live closely with him again. Remember, people hadn't been able to experience being really close to God because Adam and Eve had disobeyed God. Jesus was the Savior God promised to send. Jesus made the way for us to be forgiven of our sins and to be in relationship with God. Can you tell your mom or dad what Jesus did for us? That's right. He came to earth to give up his life by dying on the, pro the cross so we could be forgiven of our sins and live forever. He didn't stay dead, did he? No! After he died, Jesus' friends took his body, wrapped it in a linen cloth, and placed it in the tomb. Then they closed the tomb by ro rolling a very large stone in front of it. When they came back on the third day, Jesus wasn't there. The tomb was empty. An angel was sitting on the top of the tomb and told Jesus' friends he had risen. He came back to life just like he promised. He stayed on the earth for 40 more days teaching his disciples. Then he went back up to heaven. Jesus is alive. That's why we celebrate on Easter morning. And that's why Hamilton's box was empty. Our clue to the big God story. The place that they put Jesus' body is empty because Jesus isn't dead. He's alive. He came to earth to give up his life so we could be forgiven of our sins and live forever with him. When we choose to believe that Jesus, God's only son, died for our sins and decide to follow him, we get to be with God forever. I'm so thankful that Jesus came so I can know God and be close to him. And you know what, boys and girls? That's not the end of the story. We get to be part of God's big story too. The story gets to continue with you and with me. Isn't that so exciting? Wow, I sure really liked our story this mm. week. And it's so important to remember God's big story. Right. And I am so also so glad that our boys and girls and you and me can mm. all be a part of God's story. That is so true. And you know what? Sometimes we need things to actually help us remember God's story. One of the fun things we can do at Easter, Yolanda, is actually decorate Easter eggs. Mm -hmm. So we thought that maybe we could decorate some Easter eggs, and use colors that help remind us of the story, of God's oh. big story. Um, so moms and dads, in your resources, you can find these eggs, and you can print those off, and you can decorate them. So why don't we decorate these? Let's give some ideas to these kids. Hmm. Okay. Well, oh. at home... We have crayons, so okay. if you have crayons, you can need a black, a red, a yellow, and a green so that you can decorate them. That's awesome. And and you know what? Like, that would be so good. You could color them. Do you know what else is really fun? Is using tissue paper. So maybe some of you guys have tissue paper, and like, I can put some yellow. That reminds us of heaven, and I could put some green on. That reminds me of growing in Jesus. That looks good. Do you know what my favorite thing to do is? Oh, I don't know. What is your favorite thing? Glitter! Oh, oh, I love glitter! glitter. Okay, put some glitter on my okay. eggs. 
There we Ooh. go. Oh, that looks so good. Okay. You know, when I was a kid, they had a song that they did to a book that had no words in it, but it helped me remember what each one of these colors stood for. Oh, you yes. remember I it? remember that song. Yeah, we should sing it for the boys and girls Holy at home. Shit. Let's do that. Okay. okay. All right. Ready? Yes. My heart was black with sin until the Savior came in. His precious blood, I know, has washed me white as snow. And in God's word, I'm told, I'll walk the streets of gold. What a wonderful, wonderful day. He washed my sins away. So boys and girls, you can sing that song to help you remember all those colors that remind Reminds us of God's story. Yeah, and when you're done decorating your Easter eggs at home to all match all the colors, we'd like you to send them in to us yeah. so that we can see the wonderful ideas that you guys did because you're all so creative. I love seeing them. Look, look, little oh, ones. You want to see, these are, ours these are look awesome. Ours that we just did like today. Yeah. So, yeah. I can't wait to see yours, boys and girls. It'll be so fun. Well, that was great. But you know what, Pastor Jerry? I actually got to get running. Oh, okay. Yeah, I do. But for you and for you guys at home, guess what time it is? Uh, Mail time! Today, Georgina has joined me. Hi, everyone. Hi, Georgina. It's so good to have her. Last week, Pastor Jim and Chantal were our guests, and we're doing the same verse. Georgina, have you been practicing? Yes, I have. Good job. Do you want to get the verse and maybe remind us of it? It's probably in our mail time. Do you got it? Oh, perfect. All right. Let's see what it says. Oh, it's John 5, 24. Very truly I tell you, whoever hears my word and believes in him who sent me has eternal life. Oh, that's such a good verse. Okay, do you know the actions? Yes, I've been practicing. Okay, do you want to show the actions and maybe I'll say the verse? Does that sounds sound good? good. Sounds okay. good. Okay, so very truly I tell you. Okay, so you're doing a hand. Do you want to explain it? Okay, hands to the mouth and then... Forward. Forward. Awesome. Okay. So very truly I tell you, whoever hears. Hands to your ears. Awesome. Whoever hears my word. Okay. Believes him who sent me. A hand to your chest. Right. Hands to your chest. And then we go up, right? Please. Who sent me and then point up. Okay. Has eternal life. And you shake your hand there. Awesome. Okay. Should we do it together? Yeah, sure. Okay. Let's do it. Very truly, I tell you, whoever hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life. Good job. Should we do it one more time for the book? Yes, okay. I think that would be great. Okay, okay, here we go. Ready? Yes. Awesome. Very truly, I tell you, whoever hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life. Good job, boys and girls. Boys and girls, let's remember Jesus is alive. We just learned that Jesus died for us and then he came alive again. Georgina, what are some things that are alive? Can you think of some things? Yeah, bears. <gasps> That's true. Bears are alive. They're kind of scary too. Um, how about fish? Yeah, fish are alive. Okay. How about dogs? Do yes, dogs are alive mm -hmm. and they're fun too. Yeah. How about cats? Yes, cats are alive. Okay. Um, how mm. about flowers? <gasps> flowers, yes. Yeah, flowers are alive. And boys and girls, this su special Sunday, we're going. Our craft is. We're going to make flowers this oh, Sunday. Oh, that's awesome. I love that idea. So that's probably going to remind us, right, that Jesus is alive. Because yeah. just like all those things we talked about, flowers are alive too. Yeah. Um, there's the picture that's coming up on your screen right now, boys and girls. And there's instructions in your resources that will show you how to make your flower. Yes. And when you're done, we will love to see it. So make sure you send us a picture of your craft. Okay. Before we go... 
we have one final game to do for you. I don't know if you've noticed, but throughout this area, there's some fun eggs scattered. And so Georgina and I are going to step away, and Miss Brooke is going to go in really tight. And we want you to look and see and find as many of the eggs as you can. There's yellow eggs and blue eggs and pink eggs. What other color is there? Um, I think there's... I think, think that's it. I think that's it. Oh, I see purple oh, eggs purple. too. Purple eggs. Okay, so boys and girls, as you're looking, we want you to count how many there are. Speaking of egg hunt, we have a special event that we have planned for our church family and community. And we have a special gift for each boy and girl. For all the details, please check on our church website. I'm so excited for that, Georgina. It's going to be fun, right? Yes. Boys and girls, we want you to remember that Jesus is the promised Savior. He loves you, he died for your sin, and he died for my sin. But Jesus, he's stronger than death. He didn't stay dead, right? He rose and he came back to life. Yeah, because of that, we can live with God right now and live with him forever and ever. May you know and experience God's great big love for you this week. All right, bye, bye, boys, boys and, girls. and girls. See you next, next week. week.